Friends, this is Rob, the Sapper Gardener, representing Ession's Family Garden, and I'm gonna take a break from watching uh, the New Orleans gardener, Miss Linda. She's uh, talking about her fall gardens and some of her seeds, and I'm gonna run outside. It's a somewhat um, overcast and drizzly day today, but I'm gonna try to hopefully run out and take a little bit of video to do two things today that I have not done before. Um, one was inspired by our friend Eric over at Eric Hale and uh, he talked about overwintering peppers bringing them inside so we have some small peppers that I put out and uh, when I put them out I wasn't sure they would have time to mature uh, before it started cooling down and it has started cooling down now so I'm going to go out take some of those small peppers and I'm actually going to clean them off repot them with fresh potting soil here in the sapper cave and see if they will overwinter until next spring um, hopefully I can make room for them down here and the other thing I'm going to do is try to take some pepper cuttings from some of our bigger peppers, our uh, lemon drop pepper, our uh, Tayanaksumi pepper, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong again. And uh, I've never taken uh, pepper cuttings before, but um, yeah, after I watched Eric's video, Eric's video, um, I said, well, I wonder if I could try to take cuttings from some of our favorites that did do great and have grown up into pepper bushes. And uh, I went online, did some research, and I went to uh, Gardening Know How, which is one of our favorite uh, channels to go get some information. And they did talk about taking uh, pepper cuttings. So I read down, and I'm going to try to follow along with their information. Here's their website. But I will also put a link to it down below to this and then you from here you can go and find a lot of other great information so I'm gonna try to go out today between the the drizzling showers and uh, get both those done and I'll try to take the camera out with me so that we can catch some footage of it So I have never done this before so this will be something for us to try and to learn from out here in our garden. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the cuttings. I've got a pair of sharp scissors that I sanitized with alcohol and a container that I sanitized with alcohol and I'm going to take cuttings from four of our pepper plants and each pepper plant I'll probably take three or four cuttings from because even just reading the gardening know-how information it says your odds of getting a hundred percent success with the cuttings is low everybody who's watched my channels knows my history with fig cutting so hopefully at least one of each cutting takes I do have a plug kit that I'll show you when I go back inside the plug kit is just a little uh, like a foamy medium uh, shaped like a uh, plug and a hole in it so once I take the cuttings I'll coat them in rooting hormone I'll put them inside the plug kit and we'll see how many of them take root so we're going to take cuttings from our lemon drop pepper we're going to take a cutting 
from my Taya Natsumi pepper. We're going to take cuttings from our most mature uh, Bikinho pepper. And I'm going to go over to the Strawbell Garden and I'm going to take cuttings from the Dragon Toe pepper. And then I'm going to take those inside. And as far as the overwintered pepper plants, we'll probably do the Scotch Bonnet pepper. And then I'll look and see if we have any small, not quite mature plants that I don't think we'll get peppers from before the first frost comes in another month or so. And then I'll clean those off, repot them, and then I'll take those inside also. And then we'll see come spring how many of them we have left to transfer out. You know, fingers crossed, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So let me get to cutting. So we're going to cut about five inches off of uh, this lemon drop pepper plant because it's one of the biggest ones that we have here. Um, about five inches. We're going to cut right below where it splits and we're going to uh, drop them down in here. Um, actually I probably should have put some water in here before coming out just to keep those moist. So I'm actually going to run in and get a little bit of uh, uh, fresh water, uh, spring water or filtered water and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going to start clipping. from outside to inside we're gonna wash everything down try to get any bugs or anything that we don't want in the house we're gonna try to wash off and even the breeze time I've been doing and I've seen a few uh, mites and ants and whatnot come off may even be a few aphids on here we're not sure but we'll give it a good nice shower and then we'll set up our plug kit and get these put in the plug. Alright, I'm back down in the sapper cave. I've got our plants sprayed off so hopefully there's not too many uh, bugs or any uh, anything from outside we don't want inside on them. 
I'm going to turn you guys around and I'll show you our setup. Uh, we are using a uh, plug kit, a uh, seed starting kit that we got from Park Seed. It's called a Biodome. Uh, I'm sure there's other places that sell something similar. But I'll show you what we're going to do. I'll do a few of them once you kind of can see what we're doing. <laughs> then uh, I'm going to go and race the rain and try to get those other pepper plants cleaned off and brought in that we're going to bring in. So let me swing you around and you can see what I'm doing from my POV. So we got a few simple things that we're going to be used. This is our Biodome seed starting kit. It's a plug tray. Um, the plugs are very inexpensive to get refills for. But uh, basically what you do is you fill the bottom of it with water. You plant a plug in it. And the plugs have a little hole in it. These are biodegradable. So once they've uh, rooted in here, you just pull the plant and the plug out. Uh, you transplant it into a pot or into a ground or whatever you're going to be using. Uh, we've got some already in our biodome uh, kit. So I'm going to put as many of the, the cuttings as I can into these and hopefully within a few weeks we see uh, root growth and then we'll be able to transplant them out but uh, let me uh, get the scissors uh, cut a few and you can see how we do it so we're gonna start off with our lemon drop pepper and this is actually going to be more than just uh, three or four cuttings of uh, the way I took it off I left pep peppers on, that just helps me to know what I'm working with. I'm going to start off and I'll put a little uh, marker in our biodome tray so we know what it is. But you're going to cut off a cutting three to five inches again, right below the leaf node. Um, that's supposed to help it to um, grow bushier plants. We will be taking the peppers off obviously because we don't want the plant trying to continue to feed the pepper instead of developing roots. So I'm going to do a few for you. I'm going to take this leaf off. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. And this will probably be three cuttings here. It's actually still got some flowers. So I'm going to take off this pepper. And then I'm going to cut this maybe a quarter inch below where the leaf node comes out at. And then I'm going to take this. There's actually another pepper on there. So any place I see peppers or flowers, those are going to come off. Because we don't want this plant trying to reproduce. We want this plant trying to take root and grow. So any leaf bud, any uh, flower buds or plants you want to take off and then we're going to wipe it in our rooting hormone and for us we're using a combination of a uh, mycorrhizal fungi called great white and we're using um, powdered cinnamon. cinnamon. Cinnamon is a great rooting hormone and then we're going to take it and we're going to stick this right down into our plug just like that so easy peasy I will clip off some of these leaves I'll leave some leaves so it can uh, uh, continue well we're doing it I may as well show you now because we don't want the plant struggling to keep anything alive on it that we don't want alive on it so we're going to leave the top leaves the rest we're going to clip off and like we always do in the garden we're going to hope that we get some life from this plant so just enough leaves for it to be able to continue photosynthesis as much as possible so we got a nice little cutting there and hopefully this will go into a bushy plant for us. So let me dip it in the rooting hormone again. 
we're going to put it in our plug, which is damp already. Uh, we put some uh, distilled water in it. And this tray has just enough water to make the tray uh, float. So that means the uh, water is in contact with your uh, seed plugs. This is wicking water up, so it makes sure that the plant always has a constant supply of water. So you always want to make sure that you have that. So we've done one. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to finish the rest. And then I'll bring you guys back, show you our completed seed tray. And then we'll quickly go out before it rains. And then we'll transplant in a few of our small peppers. So we got all our uh, cuttings trimmed, we uh, made sure we rolled them around in rooting hormone, we took off uh, some of the leaves and we tried to take off all of the uh, uh, fruit buds and the flower buds. We're going to sit these on our shelf underneath the grow lights and then we're going to check to see if we have any root formation. Uh, if you have root formation with these, it's nice and easy to just uh, lift it up and you'll see the roots sticking out of the, uh, the seed plugs. And hopefully uh, this experiment works for us. If it doesn't, you'll know it doesn't. <laughs> but uh, if it does, uh, we'll have some uh, peppers we can uh, overwinter um, and hopefully have nice, strong, big peppers to put out in the garden in the spring. So let me get these on the shelf and then I'm going to run back outside and I'm going to get a few of our pepper plants that are underdeveloped to see if we can get those uh, transplanted in. and. Uh, Again, another experiment for us. We uh, trust Eric Hale. He said he's been doing it for years. We're going to see if it works for us. And we're in a similar grow zone to him. So we definitely can't grow peppers as perennials outside. But we'll see what we can do inside. Well, I was expecting it to rain more. And <laughs> now the sun is out. So... We're going to transfer five of our peppers into somewhat small pots to take inside. Uh, we've got two Scotch bonnet peppers that we started uh, probably mid-late summer. And we know they're not going to mature out here. So I'm going to transfer those into small pots. And we're going to take them inside. And we're going to get three mature plants from the garden. One small Tainatsu pepper. One Bikino pepper. And either a Sugar Rush or a Lemon Drop pepper. And we're going to put those in a little bit bigger pot. As you can see over here. And hopefully those will be big enough for the roots to continue to grow uh, through the fall, the winter. If we need to, we'll transplant them into, or we'll up pot them into bigger pots. But let me go grab the ones that we are going to transplant. We'll bring them up here. We're gonna wash them off. We're going to uh, use fresh potting soil, except for these two pots came from inside and uh, Whatever we planted in them didn't grow, so we're going to reuse that potting soil. So, I'll be back in a minute once I get the plants up here. plants from the garden and our scotch bonnet are over there and I'm going to call an audible just based on the root growth on these I 
knew those small pots were not going to be sufficient. We're not really looking to continue to get fruit out for these for six months, but we do want to have some space for the roots to grow. So I think the slightly larger pots will be a better fit for these three we're transplanting and the scotch bonnet will go into the small ones so let me uh, get these washed up and transplanted into some fresh potting mix <laughs> So we got all five of our pots potted up, we got our two scotch bonnets, we got our Tayakonatsu, we got our peppers potted up, our sugar rush and our bikinho. And uh, one question uh, people may ask why are we potting up uh, such small peppers instead of trying to overwinter our big fully mature producing peppers i'm kind of old school uh i like to go by that saying trust but verify so we're going to make sure that this works for us before we start uh sacrificing plants uh this early or th even this late in the season that may still produce some uh, good fruit for us uh 
Our bikini pepper has some uh, fruit on it. And it may mature in this pot or we may get fruit drop due to the transplant. So we're going to see if we get fruit drop, we get fruit drop. But if these five peppers overwinter well for us and we can put them in the ground and we get even more abundant fruit next year, this will be a, a win for us. If not, we're not sacrificing uh, much from our production for this year. So me and uh, SK1, who's behind the camera, Hopefully that was worth it for me to <laughs> spin everybody around. But we're going to get these five in. Again, this soil in here is not outside soil. This is soil from uh, inside. So hopefully we won't be taking in any uh, pathogens, any uh, uh, pest insects or anything. And if we do, we hopefully have minimized it. So let us get these inside and then I'll close out once we're situated in the sapper cave. So I actually forgot so I actually forgot I have a small bay laurel plant here the large one is going to be uh, transplanted out in the fall, but the small one is not growing anywhere near as large as its sister plant. I got both those at the same time. One is about three, four feet tall, and the other one is still six inches. So the six inch one, I'm going to go ahead, uh, repot that in a smaller pot. And I'm going to take that inside. I figure I may as well do it while I'm doing the pepper plants. And then uh, I'll meet you guys inside. Matter of fact, we can close out now. Come here, buddy. Yeah, everybody knows what a plant looks like in a pot. So I'm going to close out, finish that up, and then uh, go inside. Uh, we're celebrating my youngest uh, birthday today. So we got stuff we need to get done. So on behalf of the family here at Essiance Family Garden. This is Rob the Sapper Gardener with SK1 saying God bless our great country America. You, wherever you reside around the world, your garden, your harvest, your kitchen, your meals, and especially your family to have health, success, and prosperity during these troubled times. And uh, God bless all our brothers on two wheels. Loud pipes save lives and we got a lot of them going by our house today. <laughs> Take care. Sapper out and SK1 out. Take care, everyone. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Robert. Happy birthday to you and many more.